Good afternoon. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Victorian Pride Centre uh, at Open House Melbourne 2021. Sorry you can't be here with us today, uh, but what we'll do is we'll take you on a bit of a tour of the building, talk to you about the vision of the Pride Centre and show you its beauty. I'm Justine Delariva. I'm the CEO of the Pride Centre. My pronouns are she, her. I want to start first by acknowledging uh, our traditional custodians on the land on which we're meeting today, the Bunurong peoples of the Kulin Nation, and pay my respects to their elders past and present. This is the exterior facade, the front of the Victorian Pride Centre, uh, six years in the making, $50 million later, and the LGBTIQ community have their first purpose-built home. I'm going to take you inside and show you through. Come with me. Welcome to the ground floor of the Pride Centre. As you come in through the airlock, uh, you'll be greeted uh, at our concierge desk. The concierge desk uh, will be staffed by volunteers, members of the LGBTIQ community, uh, the Victorian Pride Centre is a purpose-built home for the community. It's the first of its kind in Australia, designed by James Brearley, a Brearley Urbanist, uh, Architects and Urbanists, as well as Grant uh, Amon Architecture. Ground floor of the Pride Centre is a place of social connection and welcoming. Uh, to my left here, we will have a commercial cafe uh, where people can drop in and grab a coffee. Uh, and then they can come and sit anywhere on the ground floor. We've got a series of co-working desks and booths. Uh, you can hook into our public Wi-Fi for a couple of hours, uh, have a meeting, uh, catch up with friends. Really, this space is all about uh, just hanging out and being in a safe and inclusive and respectful environment. To my right, we have what is called the Pride Gallery. The gallery will be activated throughout the year, our first exhibition entitled Identity, Adornment and Transformation uh, displays the works of five uh, First Nations queer Indigenous artists and we're very, very proud to be able to display that work as our first uh, gallery exhibition. This space will be activated over the, throughout the course of the year. Uh, so again, when you pop in to just grab a coffee and have a chat, you'll be able to also view the works on display. Uh, here we're at uh, what we call the atrium or the emu egg. Uh, throughout the process of the build uh, and the design phase, the architects consulted with the Boonarong uh, Foundation with now it's Dr. Carolyn Briggs and uh, her mob in order to ensure that the design uh, would have a connection and a reflection to the First Nations people. The emu is a symbol of the Boonarong peoples and this magnificent egg has been designed uh, to reflect in a sense a coming out. So you can see at the top, the egg is in a sense broken. Uh, the community has emerged from the egg, we've uh, come out. So that sense of emergence of the community more broadly is reflected in the design of the emu egg. We've also got our stunning staircase. Again, the staircase has been um, created in a way to be multi-purpose, uh, used for a range of different reasons and activations. People can come and sit with a colleague and a chat, uh, but it can also be used as a platform seating for events uh, and uh, forums and activations that will happen here on the ground floor of the Pride Centre. So we call the area where the co-working desks are down here the forum because we want this space also to be a space of activation. We'll go around the back now. Here behind the atrium uh, and behind the staircase, uh, it's not uh, Harry Potter under the staircase, it's going to be hares and hyenas. And for those of you who may know, hares and hyenas uh, is a very well respected uh, bookshop, uh, LGBTIQ bookshop, uh, currently in Fitzroy on uh, Hoddle Street, no, in Fitzroy on Johnson Street, in Fitzroy on Johnson Street. 
and they'll have uh, this space under here as a retail area where they'll extend what they do uh, in Fitzroy here in St Kilda. So we're very excited to have uh, Hairs and Hyenas as a resident organisation of the Pride Centre. Uh, we've got around 15 resident organisations and as we go through the building, I'll talk a little bit about what those organisations do and why they're here, why we want, um, uh, why, why we have those organisations here in the centre to collaborate and bring community together. On the ground floor, we also have one of our ground floor meeting rooms or a ground floor boardroom. This has been proudly sponsored by the House of Wellness, one of our corporate sponsors have been important uh, in, supporting the, uh, in supporting the Pride Centre uh, through both financial and partnership activations. The ground floor boardroom uh, is a bookable space, so not only can the resident organisations book this space, um, but so can third parties. So small groups, uh, they could be sporting groups, uh, craft groups, activity groups, who usually have their meetings around the kitchen table, uh, we want those groups to come in and have their meetings here in the Pride Centre, so to feel a part of the whole activation of the, of the Centre for Community. The ground floor boardroom uh, is connected to what will be our ground floor bar. Uh, again, this space is currently being designed. Uh, it needs to work in with our multi-purpose uh, theatrette as well as the boardroom. So the whole ground, back of the ground floor can be utilised for a range of different uh, activities. Uh, we hope again that this space will be activated in the next couple of months and I should really stop saying activated quite often. Ah. We're now in the magnificent uh, ground floor theatrette. This space will be used for a range of different uh, events. We hope to have people uh, maybe doing yoga on a Sunday morning, uh, to cabaret at night. Uh, it's a great space for presentations, uh, forums, round tables, as well as cabaret. And one of the really unique and special features of the ground floor theatrette is our 200 inch retractable uh, projector and screen. One of our resident organisations is the Melbourne Queer Film Festival. And so we're very keen to have them display films throughout the year. Uh, just display films about community because when you see yourself represented uh, on screen, uh, you get a sense of value and a sense of worth uh, that you know that you're part of the bigger picture. So uh, a great space, again, can be booked by uh, resident organisations as well as third parties. Uh, you could have your AGM in here as well as your birthday or a, a, a cocktail party. Uh, a stunning space, really decked out beautifully with some gorgeous finishes. Uh, the, um, uh, the curtains uh, are of a particular um, style, of course, that really do reflect uh, the beautiful finishes of the Pride Centre. Pretty handy. So that's the ground floor of the Victorian Pride Centre. I like to call it the floor of social connection because there really is so many things that can be done here on the ground floor to bring people together, uh, just to be in the space together, but also to talk, to reflect, to share stories uh, and to feel a sense of welcome here at the Pride Centre. We'll now go up to the mezzanine level. Here on the mezzanine level, we have the Australian Queer Archives. So they used to be called the Australian Lesbian and Gay Archives. Uh, they now have a permanent uh, tenancy here at the Pride Centre. This is the first time uh, the archives will be fully accessible uh, to the public. They'll be open at different times during the year. So again, you'll be able to come in and view the collection uh, or make an appointment uh, to talk to one of the archivists or members of the committee. We're very excited to have them in the space. They'll also play a role in activating some of the other areas by displaying the collection or parts of the collection and memorabilia around the struggles as well as the successes and celebrations of the communities 
if you look back down towards the ground floor, you get a glimpse of the beautiful circular and elliptical uh, design of, of the building. The, the circles reflect uh, a sense of a beehive. So the centre is about activation and vibrancy and connection and community. It's a vibrant hub. So the circles reflect uh, what you would see if you cut a piece of you know, honey in half, uh, you'd see those circles throughout. So we're, we're a hive and the circles reflect that hive, that um, sense of connection. And that's throughout each level of the building as we go. Also on this level, uh, there are end of trip facilities for employees that work uh, for the different resident organisations. Uh, it's been an important aspect of the design to also ensure that we're minimising our environmental footprint and encouraging people to come to the centre on their bikes or in a range of different ways. So having those end of trip facilities is one way to, to help motivate people to do that. Uh, accessibility has also been a really key aspect of the design of the centre. So on every floor there's an accessible uh, toilet uh, and on the ground and on the, the mezzanine there'll be a personal hoist uh, which will allow people to be able to use those facilities without necessarily needing a carer with them. Uh, another key aspect of the design that you won't find in many other uh, community buildings so that you won't find in many uh, community buildings at this point is that we have all gendered toilets. Uh, that means each toilet is self-contained. Uh, also on the mezzanine, we have the mezzanine boardroom. Again, another bookable space here at the centre. Um, also proudly supported by one of our corporate sponsors, LifeView, who provide uh, aged care services uh, to the LGBTIQ community as well as the broader community. Uh, the boardroom is a beautiful space to be able to, uh, again, have a meeting. Uh, the theatreette and the mezzanine room are all clad with uh, this uh, gorgeous uh, cork ceiling um, as part of the overall acoustic treatment uh, for the different aspects of the centre uh, with so many different resident organisations in the centre. You know, managing sound will be an important part, uh, well, was an important part of the design. It can also be utilised in tandem with the theatreette. Uh, so say there's a performance down in the theatreette. Up here you could have the pre-performance uh, pre, uh, pre gathering, uh, some uh, champagne or just a fantastic uh, viewing, uh, viewing platform for what's happening down in the theatreette. It's a bit like a, a box at the MCG. Um, but definitely less expensive. So let's go to level one. Here on the first floor, this is one of my uh, favourite levels of the Pride Centre, and that's because it houses a number of our LGBTIQ organisations, uh, some that have been established for decades, uh, others that are emerging. So on this floor you have Minus 18. Uh, they're a youth-focused organisation. You may know them for the fact that they deliver fantastic uh, inclusive training. Uh, they go out to schools as well as put on uh, queer formals across the country. They're a national organisation. Uh, so they now have their headquarters here on level one at the Pride Centre. Uh, next to minus 18, so we'll just, next to minus 18 is what we've called our activity space. And the activity space is for young people and rainbow families. A space where young people can come and connect, uh, as well as for uh, carers and parents to be able to take time out, uh, hang out with their kids in here. We expect that the activity space will be used uh, by Minus 18 in a range of different ways, including their leadership program, uh, but in general, it was important to recognise that the Pride Centre is for all members of the LGBTIQ community. Uh, and as uh, community is emerging and growing, rainbow families are being formed in a whole range of different ways. And so recognising and having a space uh, for, them, for, for them to be able to retreat and connect uh, was an important part of the overall design. 
Uh, we've been really lucky uh, to have books and, and donations made in order to fit the space out. Next to the activity space is Joy. Joy is, uh, LG, is Australia's only LGBTIQ uh, radio station. Uh, they've uh, now moved in. They've got five purpose-built uh, radio, uh, five purpose-built uh, studios. Um, a couple that will be used for broadcasting, while others will be used for uh, creation of podcast as well as uh, video. Uh, it's the first time they'll be also able to. Uh, bring artists into the studio for live performances. So their space is really truly transformational from where they've come from. Uh, they've, uh, for a community-based radio station to have such a, a facility and a home, we hope will make a significant difference to their uh, future sustainability, uh, as well as their ability to uh, transform in what is a very challenging um, uh, and awfully, often quickly changing uh, media environment. As we move around the first floor, uh, we come to the reflection room. The reflection room was advocated for by the Australian GLBTIQ Multicultural Council. Again, just like Rainbow Families, the LGBTIQ community uh, has uh, members of faith uh, that uh, form part of the community. So it was important again to make sure uh, that we had a space that recognised the, the diversity in community. So the reflection room is a, a place of prayer, it's a place of meditation, um, it's a place just to take time out. So also on the first floor, we have the Australian GLBTIQ Multicultural Council. They have a small office next to the reflection room. Uh, next to them are the Melbourne Queer Film Festival and we also have Switchboard Victoria, their administrative headquarters here uh, in the Pride Centre. Uh, they're all on the left side. On the right side, we have a series of meeting rooms of different sizes. Again, they can be booked by community, uh, by the resident orgs uh, and other small groups, uh, uh, each with um, uh, Logitech uh, video conferencing facilities. And having technology like this has been, uh, is also important so that we're able to continue to connect uh, to members of community who are geographically isolated or uh, physically and socially isolated. We really want the space to be humming and we've got 20 of these amazing co-working desks, all fully adjustable, sit-stand desks. And these desks can be hired for a day, for five days or permanently. Uh, the desks are a great way for people to come and connect with the organisations and with community, a really essential part of creating a broader home uh, for the Pride Centre, so not just the resident orgs. Uh, to that end, we've got a series of lockers. Uh, we'd hope that uh, small community groups, such as uh, sporting groups, um, will use a locker. They'll have uh, the ability to, uh, for us to take their mail. Um, we'll look after that, and that, that's one reason to, for them to come in and be a part of the centre. Uh, but also feel a part that the centre is a permanent home for them uh, as well. Uh, at the end of the co-working desk on this level, we have the amazing level one uh, balcony. Again, a space that we hope will be utilised uh, by community for a range of different uh, activities. One thing you could already think of, of course, is the uh, streaming or the um, broadcasting of the Pride March that happens here on Fitzroy Street every year. Uh, you could just imagine everybody up here waving their flags and celebrating community in the groups as they walk down Fitzroy Street. Let's go to two. Yep. We're now on level two of the Pride Centre. Uh, our cornerstone tenant at the Pride Centre is Star Health. They're a primary and allied health service. Uh, they're not LGBTI. They're not an LGBTIQ organisation, but we have very strong shared values. They do provide some services to the LGBTIQ community and they work with uh, respected LGBTIQ organisations. 
this is their administrative headquarters, so their operational centre. Uh, they don't deliver services from here, but they have a number of um, client-facing uh, locations throughout the southeast. So we're very um, pleased and excited to have uh, Star Health here. Um, they did a major fit out on this floor and they'll have around 100 staff um, coming and going from this area uh, throughout the year. So we won't go any further. Code three. Here we are on level three. We're at the top of the egg. It's pretty amazing and spectacular up here on level three. Again, up here we have a range of LGBTIQ uh, organisations. We have uh, Monash Health's uh, Gender Clinic. We've got uh, Koori Pride Victoria, uh, Star Observers Melbourne office, uh, Stephen Game Finance or Game Finance Partners, uh, as well as Transgender Victoria. So they each have uh, their own offices. They'll be delivering services to community uh, and people will be able to come up here and receive ser services from these organisations. Uh, at the, let's say at the opposite, at the opposite end of level three is Thorn Harbour Health. Uh, Thorn Harbour Health, formerly the Victorian AIDS Council. Uh, they have 500 square metres up here. They also will be delivering uh, primary and allied health services to the LGBTIQ community, uh, including uh, family violence support, alcohol and drug services. Uh, so as you can imagine, sort of up here on the third floor, we've got uh, a range of services direct to community. On the second floor, we've got Star Health and their administrative, um, ad, uh, administrative headquarters. Uh, and on the first floor, we have a range of LGBTIQ organisations that will actively work together and work and focus on different uh, parts of community. And the ground floor, our floor of social connection. So the Pride Centre uh, is a place of collaboration. Welcome to the rooftop of the Victorian Pride Centre. Again, a space where community can come together. Uh, it's a space that can be rented by the resident organisations and by other groups and services and uh, companies. Uh, a place to celebrate, to really take in the view, take in the view of what, what has been created by community. This iconic Pride Centre is a reflection of the tenacity and the resilience of a community that has suffered stigma and discrimination for decades. And while we still are not quite there, this massive, beautiful building is a reflection of our community's worth. And we want the whole of Victoria, not just the LGBTIQ community and our allies, to feel a sense of pride, a sense of pride in what's been created. Uh, this is a place of welcoming for all. So come share in the beauty. Once we can all get out again, uh, this place will be a place of vibrance. And uh, we'll be flying the flag here on our tribute flagpole um, for many years to come. And over the year, we'll be flying many other flags that represent uh, the challenges, the struggles, but also celebrates the history and achievements of members of the LGBTIQ community. Uh, I'd like to take this moment to thank Open House uh, Melbourne for inviting us uh, to be a part of Open House this year. Uh, I look forward to being part of Open House next year when we can uh, take you on a real tour, uh, a real in-person tour. Uh, I'd like to thank the State Government of Victoria, of course, as our founding uh, funders, the City of Port Phillip who donated the land, our many donors and sponsors, uh, that have all really been a part of what is a team effort. To create a, a, a collaborative community home um, takes, takes a village. So I hope you enjoyed the tour uh, and I look forward to seeing you all next year. Stay safe, uh, look after yourself, reach out to others. Uh, it's a difficult time for all, um, but we're a resilient community and, and we'll get there.